as I continue on my journey through our history, our wonderful black history, need not be a black mystery. And as I continue on my project, Uplift Literacy, I will go back today to May 16th, 1826, the date that the first African-American graduated from a college in this country. His name was John Brown Russworm. He graduated from Watt Bodine College in in the fall of uh, in this I mean in the spring of eighteen twenty six he entered Bodine College in the fall of eighteen twenty four. He um, the many African Americans looked towards Haiti as a symbol of their chance for freedom. Even those who were being held in bondage in the South through, through the drums, through the word of mouth, knew of the rebellion of the Haitian people against the plantation owners. And that gave them hope because the nation of enslaved people in Haiti rose up in rebellion in 1791 and on. January 1st, 1804, won its independence from the nation of France. At that moment, the Republic of Haiti was born as the first black republic in the world, the first independent country in Latin America, the second, the second independent nation in the hemisphere, in the Western hemisphere, after the United States. 22 years later, John Brown, Worsworm, the second black, well, they say the second, but there's some question about whether or not he's the second or the first. He was the first black graduate in the United States from Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine. Well, he gave the commencement speech, and his speech he chose was the Haitian Revolution and the future of the nation as the subject of his commencement. Rossman was born in Port Antonio, Jamaica on February 1st, 1799, a black mother and a white father who was an English merchant in the West Indies. At the age of eight, Rossman was sent to school in Quebec when the elder Rossman moved into the district of Maine. A few years later, he brought his son with him. Rossman entered Bodine College in the is Bodwin, Bodwin College in the fall of 1824 and graduated in the spring of 1826. Six months later, in March 1827, he became co editor and co publisher with Samuel B. Cornett of the Freedom's Journal, the first black newspaper published in the United States. But Worsworm convinced that racism prevented African Americans from full citizenship and dignity, he became an immigrant in 1829. Russell became the superintendent of public schools in Liberia, which was then under the control of the American Colonization Society, which became independent in 1842, the second black republic in the world. In 1836, he was appointed governor of the Cape Palmas district of Liberia, and he continued in that position until his death. June 17th, 1851. What follows is the conditions and prospects of Haiti, a speech that he gave in 1826. In his words, my voice. The changes which take place in the affairs of the world show the instability of subliminary things, empires rise and fall, flourish and decay. Knowledge follows revolution and travels over the globe. Man alone remains the same being, whether placed under the torrid suns of Africa or in a more congenial temperate zone. The principle of liberty is implanted in his breast, and all efforts to stifle it are fruitless, as would be the attempt to extinguish the fires of Etna. It is in the irresistible course of events that all men who have been deprived of their liberty shall recover this precious portion of the indefensible inheritance. It is 
in vain to stem the carrot. Degraded men will rise in his native majest majesty and claim his rights. They may be withheld from him now, but the day will arrive when they are when they must be surrendered. Among the many interesting events of the present day and illustrative of this, the revolution of Haiti holds a conspic conspicuous place. The former political condition of Haiti, we all doubtless know after years of sanguinary struggle for freedom and a political existence, the Haitians on an auspicious day, the 1st of January, 1804, declared themselves a free and independent nation. Nothing can ever induce them to recede from that declaration. They know too well by their past misfortunes, by their wounds, which are yet still bleeding, that security can be expected only from within themselves. Rather, th rather would they devote themselves to death than return to their former condition. Can we conceive of anything which can cheer the desponding spirit, can reanimate and stimulate it to put everything to hazard? Liberty can do this. Such were its effects upon the Haitians, men who would in, in slavery showed neither spirit nor genius, but when liberty, when once freedom struck their astonished ears, they became new creatures, stepped forth as men, and showed to the world that through, though slavery may be numb, it cannot entirely destroy our faculties. Such were men to saint the Overture de Salles and Christopher. The Haitians have adopted the republican form of government and so firmly is it established that no nation has the rights and privileges of citizens and foreigners more respected and crimes less frequent. The Haitians are brave and generous people. If cruelties were inflicted during the Revolutionary War, it was owing to the policy pursued by the French commanders who compelled them to use retaliatory measures. But those who, who shall ex, ex, expostulate with men who have been hunted with bloodhounds, who have been threatened with and artify these relations and friends have been hanged on gibbets before their eyes, have been sunk by hundreds in the seas, and tell them they ought to exercise kindness towards such mortal enemies, remind me not of mortal duties of meekness and generosity, Show me a man who has exercised them under these trials, and you point to the one who is more humane. It is, un it is an undisputed fact that more than 16,000 Haitians perished in the modes above specified. The cruelties inflicted by the French on the children of Haiti have exceeded the crimes of Cortez and Pizarro. Thirty-two years of their independence so gloriously achieved have affected wonders. No longer are they the same people. They have faculties, yet these faculties are pressed under the load of servitude and ignorance with countenance erect and fixed upon the heavens. They can now contemplate the works of a divine menace. Restored to the dignity of man to society, they have acquired a new existence. Their powers have been developed, a career of glory <coughs> and happiness unfolds before them. The Haitian government has arisen in the neighborhood of European settlements. Do the public proceedings and details of this government bespeak an inferiority? Their state papers are distinguished from those of many European courts only by their superior energy and non-exalted sentiments. And while the manners and policies of Boya emulate those of his Republican neighbors, the court of Christophe has almost as much property, almost as many lords and ladies of the bedchamber, and it's, and it's almost as great a proportion of stars and ribbons and gilded chariots as those of his brother, brother potentates in any part of the world. Placed by divine providence in the midst circumstances more favorable than their ancestors, the Haitians can more easily than they make rapid strides in this career of civilization. 
they can demonstrate that although God of nature may have given them a darker complexion, still they are men alike sensible to all the miseries of slavery and all the blessings of freedom. May we not indulge in the pleasing hope that the independence of Haiti has laid the foundation of an empire that will take rank with nations of the earth that a country, the local situation of which is favorable to trade and commercial enterprise, possessing a free and regulated government, which encourages the useful and the liberal arts, a country containing an enterprising and growing population which is determined to live free or die gloriously, will advance rapidly in all the arts of civilization. We look forward with peculiar satisfaction to the period when, like Tadi of old, her vessel shall extend the fame of her riches and glory to the remotest borders of the globe, to the time when Haiti, treading in the footsteps of her republic, shall, like them, exhibit a picture of rapid and unpre unprecedented advance in population, wealth, and intelligence. That is my, in their words, my voice today on May the 16th, John Brown Russell, The Conditions and Prospects of Haiti. I hope you have a great Tuesday and just remember that, you know, our black history need never be a black mystery. Have a great day.